From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key To open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery Hello, and welcome again to Creative Connections. I'm your host, Gary Blanchard, and today my guest is a painter, artist, Loretta Madeiras. Loretta, welcome. Thank you, Gary. Nice to meet you. So you are going to talk to us about your artwork. First, you have a couple of events coming up that you're involved with Correct. that you wanted to talk about. Yes, I would like to talk about um, the involvement with the Agawam Artist Group, uh, first of all. They are doing a mosaic project, which is going to be held at the Crestview Country Club in Shubaika Verlaine in Agawam. And they are going to be auctioning those off um, at a very reasonable price. And the, the proceeds will be going to benefit art scholarships and art projects in the co local communities. Great. So we're going to, we range from Brimfield, Massachusetts, all the way down to Suffield, Connecticut, and Agawam and West Springfield area. So there's quite a group of artists that have contributed to this mosaic project. Oh, that's great. That was given up by the library, and we're looking forward to that. Um, it is a well, well known group out there. It's been in existence for some time, and so they are doing quite well. Good. They're also going to have an Arts and Crafts Festival on Saturday, August 27th, and Sunday, the 28th of August, at the Agawam Polish American Club, which is on 139 Southwick Street in Agawam. That's in Feeding Hills. There's going to be over 60 vendors. It'll be open free to the public. There's free parking. There's going to be some live demonstrations. There'll be food trucks there. There'll be entertainment, kids' craft areas, and the artists who belong to our group will also be displaying their work at the art show. Wonderful. So, and so we'll have, have that going on for the two days. So it's going to be a really wonderful event. We're lo everyone's looking forward to it. We've been down with COVID and not be able to see the public for very long. So right. it's, it's going to be really nice to have an event again. Um, there are two other small things that I would like to mention, which sure. is related to Workshop 13, which I'm very involved with. I do a lot of donating of my time and delegating there. Um, I do teach some artwork there from time to time when I'm around and <laughs> not on vacation. Uh, lately, I've been on vacation a lot. But uh, we have a black and white show coming up at the Main Street Gallery, which is 69 Main Street in Ware, Mass. Um, it's a black and white show, and the opening reception is this week, Saturday, August 6th, from 3 to 5 p.m. So I hope you can make it and join us. It's going to be it's really a nice show. There's a okay, lot of nice great. pieces there. The other thing is the last call for artists for the Northeast Fine Art Show for Workshop 13. It's going to be August 21st. Go to workshop13.org to submit your entries. And I attended last year. Uh, oh, when wonderful. They had the, the show and the awards. Okay. And it was just a wonderful assortment of styles and themes and uh, just 
really. Yes. Um, we, we are concentrating or focusing on traditional realism for that show, um, but it is a well-received show. We have people from all over New England submitting work, so it is really something to see. It will. Our opening reception there will be August 26th. Great. So how did you get involved in art? How did I get involved with art? Um, I've been drawing since I was eight years old, probably. Okay. <laughs> and I always did that. Um, I had a very supportive high school teacher that saw potential in me, um, submitted some of my work. I brought a scholarship to the Boston Museum of Fine Arts that he submitted some of my artwork to, and that was really nice. That got me on my career. Great, great. <laughs> I did many workshops here and there to supplement all that. Um, and then meant for my retirement and stuff, and through the years I painted off and on, but my focus on retirement is my art career. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's a wonderful thing, is that retirement gives us time to do the things we love rather than the things that we've had to do. Right. And I, you know, I've been teaching art in my house before I retired. So I do teach, I have a studio at my house, and I do teach there, and I teach at Workshop 13, and I've done demos and whatnot at different organization, art organizations. Okay, and you've, you've brought some artwork with you. Yes. And then I've got some more that we have uh, on the screen. Okay. But let's start with this piece right here. Okay. And uh, Stanley is going to get zoomed in on that for us. Yeah. So this, you said, was Alaska. Correct. Well, I went, uh, did a trip to Alaska. I loved the mountains there. It was absolutely stunning. They really impressed me, and I just really got into painting them. <laughs> so I have three paintings, actually, that I did of Alaska, but that's one of them that I brought, so with a yeah. smaller one. Yeah, and, you know, the, the texture... You know, you can see the crags and the rocks. Yes. And uh, it's just really uh, so, so beautiful. And, you know, it, it's, you look at this picture and you think, I need to book a trip to Alaska. Alaska, yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the way I felt. <laughs> I'd love to go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. Uh, yes. another painting you brought. Yes. Is the one over by you here. And that one is, uh, I do a lot of plein air painting, and that was okay. something that I went out and I did um, plein air. It was in Petersham, Massachusetts. Okay. And went out with a friend, and we went painting uh, behind this farm, and there was a rose, and there was a church up in the distance and stuff, and it was, it's a beautiful scene, and I just, it was taken struck by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you can see like the rows of crops. Yeah. And uh, so for those in our audience who may not be familiar with it, what is plain air printing, uh, painting? Plain air painting is painting any medium that you like, really, and you're doing it outside. So whatever you see in front of you is what you're painting. And I'll tell you, people who paint and do still lifes and do paint inside the studio and then try and go outside and paint, it's a whole different animal. You have the weather conditions <laughs> to contend with, you have bugs, you have the sun, you have different things going on. And on top of that, you you see so much more than the focus of what you used to right. using. Um, so I had, when I first started doing plain eye painting, it was fun, funny because I was having a difficult time focusing on a composition mm -hmm. because you saw too much and you tried to put too many things in. Yeah. So what happened was, the way I resolved that problem for myself was to do a f only five by sevens, little little paintings okay. for a whole year, outside. All right. So you couldn't put everything in there, <laughs> it was too small. <laughs> so that worked, and then I, went, I progressed to an eight by 10 the next year and so on. But yeah, that, that was how I trained myself to just focus. And, and you know, it's funny because growing up, you know, that was sort of the version, the idea of an artist that we often saw was standing outside with the, the canvas. Yes, exactly. And, and painting what they saw. Thus, so, yeah. uh, you know, that uh, you don't see that. It's unfortunate because 
unfortunately, a lot of people stay in the studio, and it's okay if you stay in the studio and you're painting from real life. Many artists don't do that now. They paint from photos, and unfortunately, the photos do not capture all the value changes or the variance in the color because the camera cannot do it, mm -hmm. what the eye can see. Right, right. So all those little subtleties you lose. <clears throat> and so once you go outside and you're used to painting outdoors, you start to understand all those little subtleties better and then you actually start painting better because of it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it really uh, does I help. saw a piece at Mass Moco one time that looked like a whole bunch of white squares. Mm -hmm. But what it was is it was the way the light hit this square at every hour yeah. of the day. Okay. Yeah. So there were there were these variations. Correct. Of white. Yes. And it it was kind of eye opening for me because I never stopped to think how the light changes. It does. A color. It changes the color. So when you're outdoors. It changes. The scenery changes. The light changes. That's the hardest thing to capture is that light while you're out there to try to focus on that so that you don't lose it because the light keeps changing. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you have to contend with that and you learn how to deal with that. Yeah. So, let's see some of these. Oh, that's another one of my Alaska paintings. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this painting here. What I love is you've got the pine trees here. Yes. In the foreground. Yes. And you can see the motion of the water. Yes. Uh, just absolutely beautiful. And then as the mountains get further back, back. their the atmosphere changes the right, color. Right. Yes. Uh, just again, it's like you can imagine you're right there. Yes. Yeah. And and that is just so Yeah, I wanted to bring great. it back to life. And one of the things about um, painting now from photos, I can do all the nuances because I'm so used to painting plain air and going outdoors that if I use a photo, I can use my memory in the photo from that experience. And, it, and while I'm painting it, it brings me back to that experience where I was at that time, the sense the sensations that I had, what appealed to me about that location, and that's which great. Is kind so of fun. you're in painting it. You're kind of getting to relive exactly the whole experience. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. So let's see. Oh yes, that's my uh, dog Chauncey. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pastel painting, and uh, yeah. That was her, and she used to not like to go out in the rain very much. <laughs> when it was raining outside, she said, do I really have to go out? So I called the, this painting, but not, it's raining out. <laughs> and the eyes. Yes. I mean, you really, you, that's that puppy dog look. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, she would give me. She would give me that look, saying, "I don't want to do. Do I really have to?" <laughs> yeah, and and the texture of the fur. Yes. Uh, even even the nose. Yes. Uh, you can almost feel that. Yes, I that think texture. it's it's really fun. It, um, every day, I work in all the mediums. I work in oil. I work in pastel. I work with watercolor, and I work with acrylic, and each medium lends itself to a very special thing. I mean, it's just, they all have their special quality about them that mm -hmm. I enjoy. So certain things I'll do in pastel, certain things I'll do in, a, you know, so on and is, so forth. Is there so. one medium that you prefer? I've been working mainly in oils, but I prefer them all for certain things. <laughs> yeah, sort of so, the right the right tool for the right, right job. job. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is an acrylic. Now this one's an interesting one because it's done with acrylic pouring medium, which ah. when you pour on anything, I could pour it on the glass table, it would dry crystal clear just like the glass, okay? So what I did when, when it came out, I was playing around with it and stuff, and I painted a, a little bit of a background there, and then I took the pouring medium and I had just a, just a little bit of color, not much, poured it on, let it dry, then I painted on top of that, and I did, again, did it again, put a little more color in, 
on the pouring medium, poured it over. This is eight layers of, wow. of pouring and then painting and then pouring and then painting. Um, and it gave a really underwater effect. And when it's very shiny, so the finished product is very shiny. So it does look like you're underwater. Yeah, that's, that's great. You know, uh, um, most acrylic pour that you see sort of has that 60s tie-dye Yes, yes. Look. It's an abstract. You can use yeah, it abstractly yeah, right. as well, but, which is fun. But, you know, here, I've, it's the first time I have seen it used in, in this way to to get that that feeling of water. Yeah. Was this from a photo or just... Uh, it was from a variety of photos that I used, um, that I took at aquariums and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there was a couple when I did some snorkeling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, and again, some of the, the colors, and none of the colors, it's like none of them jump out and hit you in the face, but they all just blend mm -hmm. so well. And it's sort of the way nature can be. Correct, yeah. It's all, yeah, that's what you're learning about composition, about how to transition from the foreground to the background. and so on and so forth, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, I think that uh, for beginning artists sometimes, that, that is the difficult thing. It's a concept that has to be learned, yes. And then anybody can really learn it, it's just a matter of time and, and someone explaining it to you. Right, you know. I have seen some, some paintings where you can just feel like, like the road oh, yes. is, is going in and then you know, it's it's wonderful when you see that because it just it, it pulls you. you into the the painting, exactly. which is really I think a lot of times what you want to do. Yeah. Oh, this is a watercolor. That was fun. Actually, I did two at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> this was the larger one, and I did a smaller one at the same time tandem. Um, but yeah, that was fun, and that was in the springtime. Put in a vase and just yeah. Yeah, watercolor always has such a, a nice, to me, like a soft yes. feel. And yeah. usually I look at a watercolor and I just feel myself relax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it has a soft, subtle, and, and watercolor tends to transition the values very subtly on their own, mm -hmm. which is an asset for the artist, true, truly. Yeah. Uh, as a person who does not paint, how hard is it to layer watercolor? As long as you understand, have an understanding and start practicing from light to dark mm -hmm. areas, and you have that understanding that as you layer, you're just going to go darker instead of and leaving your light and being careful not to cover that over. I think that's <laughs> that's the hard hardest part for some people to yeah, understand. I would imagine, yeah. Yeah. But other from that, it's really not once you get it in your head, I think once you understand that and you practice it for a while, you do understand it and it comes to you automatically. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is scratchboard. And this is a great fun tool. Scratchboard is something different. It was used years ago for printmaking. Oh, okay. So printers used to do woodcuts and different things, but the scratchboard actually gave such fine detail that they used it for, for, for a lot of printing. It was a lot quicker than the lithographs and stuff that they had to do. So yeah, it was quicker. But it, what it is is right now, the fine, it's used for fine art and it is a masonite panel with a thin layer of white clay with black Indian ink on top. And what you do is you draw your image out on there and then you reverse draw. <laughs> because you're going from black to white. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you use a pencil, you're going from white to black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what I love is you've got all this texture you know, what I imagine is a wooden dock. Yes. And you see all the texture of the wood, almost like the wood, you know, the way the saw would yes, exactly. uh, yeah. mark the wood. And, you know, then again, I guess maybe I've got this thing for eyes because that eye 
<laughs> has a little point in it. Yes. And if you don't put that, it does it brings that's what brought it to life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, if it were just black, it would kind of look dead. <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's, that's what, yeah. It really makes a difference. That that yeah. little glint. And, and the webbed feet. Yeah. Are are really something like this. How long does it take you to? Oh gosh, it's hard to say because on those there there you can just use a tool like that looks like a pen. And they're, they're scratching pens, so they have little knives on them. People use exacto knives sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. But you can just pick it up and put it down at any time. So if I had 15, 20 minutes or 20 minutes to work on something, I wouldn't take all my paints out and get set up. Mm -hmm. I could just pick that up, pick up the tool, okay. and start working on it. So that's hard for me to say how long it yeah. would take. Probably, I would say, at least maybe 10, 12 hours. If you make a mistake. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> 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 There's no kind of going back and... There kind of is, but not really. Yeah. You could put, put some Indian ink back on top, but it's not quite the same. Right, yeah. Not yeah. that they use commercially, so... Okay. <coughs> oh, this this is, I think, is my favorite. Oh, is it? <laughs> That's at Massasoit State Park. Okay. Um, down uh, South Shore. And that was when I was camping last year. And I painted that scene. Plain air, again, Plain air, again. Out, outdoors. And what medium is this? This is oil. OK. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love it. It's almost, uh, I guess, impressionistic. Yes, yeah, somewhat impressionistic, yes. Uh, without going full Monet. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then. The gazebo there is so strong. Yeah. You know, and with that against the sort of more uh, impressionist greenery, it just right. makes it stand out well, all the it, more. Right. If you actually think about things like that, when you have something a little bit closer to you, it becomes visually more distinct. Mm -hmm. As it gets further away from you, it gets slightly blurred or it becomes less distinct. You don't see every detail. So that's, so that's a way of pushing things back too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, and again, the, the rocks there. Uh, you know, there's something, I look at this and I say, I need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a lot closer than Alaska. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, I've got a chance to see this one. Yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, this is, this is one of my favorites. Um, this is what I call Grandma's Memories. And it was items from my mother-in-law. The pot actually belonged to my mother-in-law's mother. My mother-in-law knitted the scarf that was her jewelry box, her pearls, her bracelet, and brooch. Mm. Um, and this is done in actually pastel as well. Okay. Um, so it's a memory painting. So if you have items that you would like painted of somebody, somebody close to you, and it's like not of them, but of their their items and memory, yeah. it's, it's yeah. just kind of kind of nice. And I actually went after I did it, I made copies for all of my husband's siblings, oh, that's and I nice. sent them copies, all yeah. so that they would yeah. have copy of it. You know, and, and there is something to be said for having these abstract type memories. Yeah. Because you look at that scarf or you look at the you, pearls. You, you remember her in the, per, exactly. those pearls or knitting that scarf or wearing that scarf. Wearing that scarf. So because it, she, she, she gave everyone scarves. She okay. knitted them all for everybody and gave them out to everyone. Maybe it wasn't that particular scarf, but they knew that she right. made that. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 so it, it really is a wonderful way of remembering the person. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, to look at a photograph or a, a painting of someone that you've lost is one thing. Yes. But when you can look at things that really bring back memories, yes, it really is like keeping that person alive in your heart. Yes, it I, is. I really love this. Yeah. 
Ah, this was done. Um, that's North Shore Aruba. That's done in acrylics on paper. Okay. And that was done plein air when I was on vacation as well. <laughs> okay. So that was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Uh, I, the reason why I brought acrylics is because it's easier to fly with when you're going on vacation and stuff. It, it, and yeah, and it, it dries quicker. Very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about carrying wet paints or anything else. Right. When you're switching from acrylic to oil, does it... How how do your how does your brain kind of my my brain already automatically goes there because I actually teach a lot of acrylics too okay. as well so it I don't have a prob problem switching from one to okay. the other so all right so you don't have to say okay for this yeah. I've got yeah. to but I think for other people if they were into oils which take a lot longer to dry. Um, people have a hard time working with it because they dry so quickly. So, yeah, you have to have an understanding of what you can accomplish and how you do it and right. yeah, Cause how to move things around. Yeah, I, I know sometimes artists will you know, kind of move things a little bit after it's painted. Or but, while, while they're painting. Right, even. yeah. Yeah, and, or, you know. But if your paint is going to dry more five, quickly. Five minutes, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. may not account for that. Yeah, you have to ha you have to be able to move it the first two minutes. Okay. If if you're go not going to move it after that, you're not going to move it after that, really. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's another scratch board, um, and that one um, an award at Academics Artists. Okay. Uh, show that's done every year. That's a well-known show, Northeast show. Okay. It's a national show. So that was an award winner that I did. I, I can see too. And you know, it's it's funny because it's this black and white scratch board, but I can look at it and I can tell that this is a tree that has snow on it. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, I think sometimes that black and white just uses more of your brain because it's sort of like your brain is filling in some of the colors. It does. As you look at it. Yes. You know, and but then it also the contrasts. Yes. It's easier to divine values with black and white and people mm -hmm. can yeah. People can understand the value changes better or artists can. Yeah. So yeah, it's helpful. If people want to learn more about your art, where would they go to? Uh, they could go to me on Facebook. Loretta Madeiras, that'd be just my name. Just Google, I don't know, look for me on Facebook. I, okay. I am public, have a public posting there. Uh, you could also call my home phone, and if you want to have any questions, you could call me on my home phone, which is 413-245-7565. Great. And uh, you could ask me any questions. You could. I do have classes that I offer or whatever, and or I could direct you to other classes if you're interested. Okay, and uh, so there is a mosaic project coming up Yes. on August 11th in Agawam? Correct. Then the Arts and Crafts That's Festival? On the t August 27th and 28th, which is going to be great. That's at the Agawam Polish American Club. Yeah. Okay, and Loretta, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your art with us. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Gary. Thank you. And thank you. And I want to Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time on Creative Connections. Life goes by so quickly Just slips away But tomorrow brings a brighter day Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer than it seems